nervous. I mean, a chest injury is kind of unusual. Yes, it is. Bruise. To get the three and zero record after today would be impressive. We see the Bobcats congregating around the goalpost. Western end zone. And uh, we can take a look at the starting lineups for Frostburg State on offense. Look for Mike Jones, number eight, to start at quarterback. He's five foot eight, 158 pounds, and only a sophomore. In the backfield with him will be Big Rory McTighg, the fullback out of the wing tee, six foot, 196 pound junior. He'll wear number 21. Running from the halfback position and getting his first start of the season is number 34, J.R. Bosley. He uh, was an area player of the year a few years back, and he hails from Southern High School in Oakland, Maryland. Also seeing some time back there will be number 33 at halfback, Andrew Fuqua, who is 5'10", 176 pounds, a senior. Chip Wright is the wingback. He'll wear number 10. Not a real big guy, Ted. <laughs> Five foot four, 147 pound senior, but uh, he's a tough one out of Damatha. He is, he is little, but you're right. <coughs> Pardon me. He is tough and he is quick. Yeah, you have to be when you're that size. Split end for the Bobcats will be Norman Summers, 6'1", 185 pound senior. He'll wear number five. Another receiver will be the tight end, number 88, Bill Seymour, 6'2", 221-pound junior. That's pretty big for a tight end. Well, he's a big lad, and I'll tell you what, he's as nice as he is uh, as he is tough. I had him as a student last semester, matter of fact, all last year, and he's just a prince of a kid, so I'm glad he's getting his chance to start. If you're going to run a good ball control offense, the key has got to be the offensive line, and Frostburg State has a good one. Right tackle is Jim Nichols, 6'4", 260. The right guard, Bill Park, 6'4", 200. Center is Paul Kumpar, 6'3", 223. Mike McGuire is the left guard, 5'10", 269 pounds. And the left tackle is Mark Wells, 6'2", 250. The Bobcats uh, going up against a Salisbury State defense that will uh, identify as they make the tackles. Uh, Simmons, Phillips, Stofa, and Harmon will be the front. Helton, Bowen, and Voorhees will be the linebackers, although their sports information director told me today that they'll bring a safety up and it'll actually take on the look of a 4-4 defense at times. Uh, one of those safeties might be uh, Harry King coming up. He'll wear number 18, kind of a monster back type, 6'3", 190-pound junior. The uh, Salisbury State offense, a couple of changes from last week. Uh, they will use Chris Marchetti at center in place of John Phillips. Um, Marchetti in place of Phillips at center. And the quarterback, replacing Pat Poole, who started the first two games, will be number 16, James McCormick. One note about the uh, Salisbury State coach, Joe Rotelli, uh, Rotolini, I should say. Uh, he is in his first season, and uh, he has an 0-1 career record. You might be wondering, well, the uh, Seagulls are 0-2. What, what does this mean? Well, his father passed away last week, and he did not get back until practice until uh, last Thursday. So he went over the 35-yard line, out to about the 36. Voorhees on the tackle for Salisbury State. Great field position, Paul. Already, the Bobcats uh, in motion. We now again reviewing that backfield. Mike Jones is the quarterback. He'll wear number eight from the 36. Jones comes away on that uh, plunge right up the middle. Here goes Carter. Jimmy Carter is gone. 20, 10, end zone, touchdown Bobcats. I'll tell you what, Paul, the reason he got outside was because everybody, including you and I, was fooled by a great fake. To McTighe up the middle, and around left end comes Carter untouched. Always listen to your sports information director. Jeff Crone came to me and said, hey, they got some crappy fakes back there. You might not see it early. Well, we, we, we did see it early. It. We saw it early. Yes, we saw it early. Well, you know, the first play set up the second play. Of course, McTighe got the middle of the McTighe got the middle three times out of four, but they didn't wait for the third. Scott Lehman is on to attempt the point in a, a preseason scrimmage game against Hopkins last year, I believe, and uh, wasn't able to play at all. And now he's back in the lineup and uh, to come home, parents weekend, run that touchdown Exciting in. Exciting is right. As a matter of fact, I would guess that uh, Salisbury didn't even look for him because Chip Wright has been playing that way back position. Bringing up the... And Frostburg and... Uh, 
it's just all part of it, and it's really neat. At tight end number 88, Tim well, As they congregate behind the sign under the goal, number goal nine, post, which says, Waste the Wolverines, right the Sea of Red. The Bobcats of Frostburg State University are about to take the field. The band lining the field and about ready to bring the Bobcats on to an ovation, I'm sure, from this uh, nice crowd this afternoon. I think the uh, crowd last week with Parents Weekend a little bit bigger. Of course, you had all the parents in at that point uh, from downstate for the players and support. But uh, still uh, a very representative crowd here as people begin to take notice of the fine quality of football performed by Coach Dennis Recchio's Frostburg State University Bobcats. And there will be an introduction of the starting lineup here on defense. Jeff Eanes introduced, and Mike Coletta, who also had a, an outstanding game on the other side of the football last week. Oh, he really week. did. Yeah, he had a great game. Coletta had a lot of pressure on the quarterback as uh, last week Salisbury State was using, oh, what, three quarterbacks throughout the afternoon. They always had fresh legs going against him, but uh, they always kept chasing him out of the pocket, no matter who the quarterback was. Yeah, I believe the de the deeper they went in their depth chart, the um, the more effective their quarterback was. Of course, that could be, uh, you know, if you bring somebody in halfway through the fourth quarter against a couple of guys that have been playing the whole game, well, of course, they're going to be a little bit fresher and right. going to have a little bit more time just because they are in a little bit better condition at that point in the game. Yeah, that's right. The vaunted defense of the Bobcats. Last year sweeping the national rankings. Number one in run defense, pass defense, and total defense. And that had never been done before. And here come the Bobcats behind the FSU banner. Carried by the big Bobcat there. Do we know who that big Bobcat is? No, I... <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. It's kind of a warm at, uh, afternoon, not 90 degrees or anything like uh, some of those baseball mascots have to go through. But <laughs> I'll tell you, they are, those guys who get in those costumes and uh, entertain the crowd certainly have my sympathy near the end of the afternoon. They have my cats. sympathy when they run on the field. Oh, yeah. Of course, they have to uh, be faster than the fastest defensive back, don't they? <laughs> There's some incentive to stay ahead of them. Yeah, well, he, you know, has a lot in common with the quarterbacks from the Seagulls last week. He did a lot of running from uh, <laughs> the Bobcats as well. The Allen Gaughan Schroeders are here this afternoon as they present the game ball. Ron Graben Carter is going to be wrestled down by a host of Wolverines as he gets up to the 45-yard line. Field tackle by Jason Sobolewski. He's a defensive end, but they showed a lot of speed. Coach Riccio continuing to shuttle plays in by his wingbacks. Carter in one time and Chip Wright the other. And Carter was very, very effective. He got a good start last week, if you remember, by running the uh, kickoff back. And uh, he uh, well, it was a late fumble because him. At any rate, nice play. That'll keep him honest. He was double covered, too. Tracy Me and uh, Lance Stewart back on defense. With a team like Frostburg State that emphasizes the run already, and he was he was the man who was there when the ball was tipped. The old tip drill. That's why they keep on practicing that. It's an old drill, but it still works. And the back two. Well, let's make it three and give him a second and seven. three on the play. One of the Bobcats seven. taking Frazier. Cats leading here, 14 to nothing over Grove City. The scoring drive put on by Greg Tellez, a defensive end. And uh, Bobcats with good field position now at the 45-yard line, as you see Jimmy come off the field. He's an exciting player, isn't he? Sure is. And again, uh, if you missed our broadcast last week, Jimmy was injured all of last year. Second and two from the 47. The Bobcats are fired before he's brought down by John Ford, the punter. Eight yards, maybe even more than that. That's a nice thing, too, Ted, because Dennis Riccio coming right back to chip right after the fumble does a lot for the confidence of a youngster. It does. You're right. Yeah, that's a good move. Saw a big tight end, Bill Seymour. Boy, he lay somebody out in the secondary. Good-looking block. Give right nine yards and make it second and one for the Bobcats. Here 
Here's the handoff, road time of the year. What's coming? Um, <laughs> yeah, the five's going to be close. Did he get out of bounds because the, the clock stopped again? We'll give him six yards. Bring up fourth and four. And for the first time this afternoon, punts exceptionally well. He punts as well as he passes. And the Bobcats coming back on the field here at halftime. Let's see if we can pick up Jones. See if he's going to be okay and make a go of it. Yeah, I see him jogging down the sideline. And it looks like he's uh, pretty mo mobile, right? perhaps so. Of course, we said up front that they had a pretty decent defense indicated by their opening two games mm -hmm. where they uh, Close lost. Scores. I like he's an impact player. I mean, when you put him in, he did the same thing last week. When you put him in, he does something. First play of the game, um, I forget who it was that came out. Probably, um, <clears throat> I think Daryl McGuire came out. And uh, Green went in and bang, he had that, well, what should have been an interception. He'd have gone all the way. But uh, he's, he's he goes in excited. You can tell that he really wants to be involved. Keith Shorter, meanwhile, is certainly involved today and uh, at halftime, uh, Jeff Crone, Sports Information Director for the University of Denver. And Grove City will kick off. As Jim Cantley gets his first Jimmy Carter up the sideline and he Goes out of bounds and legs go down. Apparently he stepped out of bounds and then got hit. And I believe that's going to be a penalty whistled against the Grove City Wolverines. Carter may still Now he's up and he's he's doing okay. Nodding his head. Yeah, I'll be all right. Jones is back in a quarterback. That's another good uh, good sign. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty against Grove City for the personal foul. Yeah, I would get, after the man went out of bounds. It's going to be the last thing that the Grove City coach wants. Start off the half with a penalty like that, and you're right. The place kicker has a, has a good foot. Despite their size, they run with some power, don't they? Yes, they do. When they when they get there, they'll stiff arm or put their heads down. And run. So they scored three times, you're saying, in, in yeah. three minutes after it was fourth and 31 or something? Yeah, like yeah. Three yeah. On the fourth and 31, they threw it deep for a touchdown. Well, I'm a new kid. I'm just an interception of the day. One of those series that uh, Coach Riccio decides that we've got some blue patches in. He's uh, definitely... Uh, got the tools to do well. If he didn't, he He's a tough little kid, isn't he, Carter? Yeah. Real good. Real good player. Uh, again, a nice luxury. Sometimes if you're forced to alternate players and bringing in plays, uh, bounds near the Bobcat bench. Jimmy will pick up four, maybe five yards. And bring up a third and let's call it three. Justin Walls from the stop. Bobcat football. Bunch of players out there. Well, they dress a ton, don't they? It's an interesting option because it was a. He faked it the fullback, he faked the halfback, he ran it for a little while, and he pitched it out. I mean, it was a genuine. 11.45. Clock stopped on the incompletion. Eanes will kick it away. There's a nice boot by Jeff. Especially if it bounces. And the return man back there. Number four, Dan Mathis, runs it out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. Well, that'll give the, the, give the red flash the ball first and 10 out of at the 20. Bobcat sideline. You can get an indication of how four, marshy it is by looking along the sidelines where you got a lot of people. Second and seven, Teleria to throw. Across the middle, he's got it. He's got Trapani at the 20. Around to the 10, he'll score. Touchdown, Chris Barber. No flags on this play, folks. Goodness. 26 nothing. 51 seconds to play in the first half. I can't wait to get the uh, stats at halftime, Paul, because I am willing to bet you that Trenton State is, has given up more yards in the first half than they are coming in there. Is that any time you do that in a goal line situation or, you know, a first down situation like that, well, you cannot help the, pro the forward progress of that man by pushing him from behind. Okay, sideline, McGlinchey talking to Teleria. Now, 
here's a question. It's fourth and two. Uh, you know... Uh, well, you know they're going to bring everybody, but I still think you have to punt in this situation. There's 3.05 to play, and you still have an 11-point lead. So, yeah, you do. Uh, uh, I mean, I know that uh, you know the momentum has not been on your side the entire second half, and it's been a rather listless second half for the Bobcats, but uh, you still got to give the ball up here, and I wouldn't try a fake. And this deep in your own territory, you're only helping the Trenton cause. High snap, and the punt is almost blocked, and then... Roughing the kicker, Reed really got whacked. And uh, number 63, that's Steve Guidette, and he just leveled Kevin Reed. Roughing the kicker, first down for Frostburg, and that's the break the Bobcats needed. And uh, sometimes you just got to let your punter pay that price. Yeah, and uh, off. Oh, and. Realistically, uh, again, that's a chance that that defender had to take. Somebody ought to help her tote that around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nettie had it right in his hands there, and it just popped out. So uh, That's a big staff, and that flag in the wind. <laughs> yeah, she's doing all right yeah, with it. There you see her. Leslie Nielsen slash Daryl Lee Powell. He <laughs> smiled. <laughs> I think to that time of the game where you're going to see a receiver stretched out and one of the Bobcat defensive backs is going to come up and ring a bell. Mm -hmm. So two seconds on the clock, and that'll do it for the first half of play here from Frostburg. End of one half. Frostburg 21. Open up the running game, and we see uh, a lot of guys have, uh, well, the least amount of yardage rushing for any Frostburg State player is 27 yards by uh, Teleria and Nord as well. And uh, the long run of the day, of course, uh, well, as we look at uh, Andre Parker's numbers, two carries for 55 yards. I thought he had a pretty good first half. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, done a nice job. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're a freshman, you stick it out for four years, you can uh, have a lot of Saturdays like this if you have the ability of Mr. Parker. Absolutely. The uh, other number to note here is Frostburg State has had the ball for 16 and a half minutes and Teal has had it for 13 and a half minutes before the uh, start of the game. Should be an interesting contest today, Paul. This uh, Shawan College team is, um, is only in their first full year of being a four-year institution, so it's all freshmen and sophomores, very young squad, and uh, they haven't had much success yet, but uh, the foundation is certainly there for an outstanding future. And uh, this team is good, or is actually weak defensively stopping the run. And that's Frostburg State's real strength offensively. And Frostburg's having trouble stopping the pass, and Shawan is passing the ball very well this year. Well, you know, I think that sometimes statistics can be misleading, Mark. Uh, the one thing about uh, the statistics that I kind of throw out the window is I look at the Frostburg offense, and I see. Ariel Bell, a junior, Mike Campbell, a junior, at the receiver position. The quarterback is Gil Teleria, he's a junior. And you look at the defensive backs for Shawan, and you see, uh, let me get in the right spot, uh, Myron Mathias, who's a freshman, Tony Fields, a freshman, Jason Williams, a sophomore, and Raymond Henson, a roverback. So I think experience is going to have a lot more to do with this game than uh, statistics in the games leading up to this one. And, uh, you know, you can't say enough about how well Teleria has led this Frostburg team so far this year. They're off to a 3-0 start, and uh, they've, they've played very well. And uh, offensively, Teleria has been able to do just about anything and everything he wants to do. He's rushing the ball very well during games. He's throwing very well. And uh, they have a lot of weapons to work with, this Frostburg team. Yes, they do. You see the defense introduced. And here come the rest of the Bobcats. Mike McGlinchey and company rushing the field. And everybody fired up as they gather in front of the bench area. 
Oh, it's a great fall afternoon for uh, foot. So at the worst, they're going to get the ball at their 40 if they recover. And it's the element of surprise, and you have a chance to really take a big early lead. Uh, I mean, it's 2.40 on the clock here in the first quarter, and if you recover that kick, that was such a fast drive by Frostburg. They scored within four minutes, and they, that was an 80-yard drive that uh, took them about four minutes to put the ball in the end zone. So they certainly have the capability of doing that and pulling that off. Let's see what the Bobcats do. Now they're, they're lining up at the 35. Kevin Reed's out there. And I, I, I don't think he realizes that the penalty is about to be assessed. And as it is, now let's see if they send in a word from the sideline. Okay, now they're going to start walking up. This is going to be 15 yards, and the kickoff is going to be from the 50. Um, Boy, field position, field position, field position. And Frostburg has had it. And ironically enough, when they had their worst field position, they put together their best drive. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is this is a chance here for Frostburg if they let's see what they do. I think it's a great opportunity to do the onside kick here. I'm with you, coach. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Two forty to play in the first quarter. Uh, you don't know what the weather's gonna be. He just uh, had a great offensive series. If you can get the ball back somehow. Now, on the flip side of this coin, let's not forget that Silas George beat everybody in the Frostburg secondary, and if Mike Arneson didn't make a spectacular effort to stop that ball, to, to break up that pass, you know, Shawan would have been on the board first. Shawan so, has uh, the lineman up front here, too, Mark, so let's see what happens. Now they're going to kick it deep. And uh, at his goal line, this is George. He takes it, tries to follow the wedge, and we got a flag. No, no flag on the play, but uh, just nothing going there. George. On the completion of this game, winners and runner-ups.